Welcome to the most visited city in Italy and the 16th most visited city ever. The capital of the world, or should I say the Caput Mundi. And there's a reason for it. Rome is an outdoor museum. It carries one of the most beautiful places and monuments that reflect the history of humanity and connects us with something larger than just ourselves. This video has a special dedication to all the curious humans that want to get the best out of Rome. Now, I do want to be completely transparent with you guys. Neither the food nor the cleanliness impressed me. Okay, let me just pause here for a second. It's not that the food is not good. It's okay, but it's hard to find the good places just because there are too many tourist traps. So do your research. So my feedback and recommendations on that is going to be limited. Nonetheless, if you have any great recommendations for restaurants or gelato, please leave it down in the comments below so other people can enjoy them. We're going to start at the east side of the river, so wherever you're staying, make sure that you head to the red line and the metro and get out at the Colosseum station and let's go from there. The Colosseum is the largest amphitheater in the world with 80 entrances that could seat approximately 50,000 spectators who would come to watch gladiatorial combats, wild animal hunts, and believe it or not, ship naval battles. These days, the tickets for adults cost 12 euros and it includes entry to the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill at no extra cost. Guys, this has to be one of the most beautiful places where I've been in my entire life. And I'm 28, you know, so it's been a long journey. What you see here is the Forum of Nerva, which is part of the Roman Forum. The Roman Forum was the center of daily life in ancient Rome. During the Roman Empire, the Forum became the site of the city's grandest monuments and temples. The area was systematically excavated in the 18th and 19th centuries and excavations continued till this day. Just a few steps away from the Forum, you will find El Palacio Vittorio Emanuele II. This is a national monument built in honor of Victorio Emanuele II, the first king of a unified Italy. And besides admiring this building, you can enjoy its museum and terrace at the top of the stairs. After you're done exploring this area, you have to go to my favorite spot in Rome, Trevi Fountain. I bet that if we make a poll, most people would agree that Trevi is one of the most beautiful fountains in the world. It has a width of 20 meters and the height of 30 meters. This masterpiece exposes the statue of Oceanus, one of the titans of the seas and rivers. There's so much energy and spirit in this place and it doesn't matter what time of the day you pass by, you will find this spot to be astonishing. Look at some reactions from my mom and my aunt. <laughs> After the fountain Trevi, if you keep walking north, you're going to find the Spanish Steps. One of the most famous locations in Rome is the Spanish Steps. It counts with 135 steps and it's an amazing place to hang out. When you come, make sure to have some extra time to explore the shopping streets around here. All of the big brands are in the area. There's also a delicious sandwich place just a few steps away from Plaza España and here are some clips from our experience in this neighborhood. or I should say gelato in Rome has been from Chiampani. Not too far from here you will find Piazza Popolo. Unfortunately I lost all of the clips that I had from this visit but it is absolutely worth it. Take the steps behind the piazza to reach the terrace from Via Borghese. It's a perfect spot for a beautiful landscape of Rome. On that note something you can't miss is Via Borghese. I came here jogging because why not? <laughs> but it will require some time for you to enjoy the park. If you come during the summer, make sure to bring some water and an umbrella because it gets extremely hot here. But there are several museums, statues, and lakes, wildlife, and live music. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's get closer to the river to show you the Pantheon and Piazza Novona. This work of art has witnessed more than 2,000 years of history. It carries a rounded shape and cleverly built dome. It was built as a temple to adore pagan gods. Today, it's considered a church and it's open to the public and it's free of entrance. However, due to COVID restrictions, it's best if you make a reservation. If you're in the area, don't miss Venci, an ice cream shop that's very famous in Rome and I would rate it as a 4.5 out of 5. There are a bunch of different piazzas and monuments in the middle of Rome, but only a few are quite as impressive as Piazza Navona. If you love Baroque architecture and an Aperol spritz under the sun, this piazza is perfect for you. Coming up next, Castle St. Angelo. This mighty castle is just a stroll away from the Vatican. The site is now a museum and it features different itineraries, including the outer walls, the basement, the papal apartments and halls, a vast collection of statues, paintings, artifacts, the Terrace of the Angel, where you can take a lot of pictures and the admission fee is about 14 euros. Now that we are on the other side of the river, let me tell you about the top things to do over here. Something else you have to do is visiting the Vatican City. I have a whole video about the Vatican, so go check it out. You're going to get hungry after visiting the Vatican, so make sure to have a meal at Prati, and I recommend here Angry Pig. This was the best porchetta I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Second best and my favorite neighborhood, Trastevere. Keep in mind that from the Vatican to here, it can take you about 45 minutes walking. If you're not up to that, check out this app called City Mapper. It's the best way to get you around Rome. The bus system is actually pretty easy and convenient to use, so no need to get sweaty in Rome. All right, so let's get into the topic. This area is for you if you like the boho, funky, local vibes and good food. Honestly, it was on this side of the river where we ate the best. Check out Nannarella, Enzo and as I said earlier, the angry pig. They won't disappoint you. Check this out. And how can I forget? Visit Santa Maria Plaza. It gets packed at night and honestly, in general, the nightlife in Trastevere is pretty hype. If you have extra time in your hands, make sure to visit the Pyramid of Cestios, the Catacombs, which are actually located in different places in Rome. It's pretty cool. The Mouth of Truth and Testacio, which is a district that has not yet been discovered by many tourists like me, but it's definitely worth the visit according to locals. The nightlife here is really cool and it's a working neighborhood that is emerging because of the clubs, the bars and the delicious restaurants. Tiber Island, Campus Martius, Basilica of San Clemente, the Twin Churches, St. John Lateran, Circus Maximus, Bio Parco. Oh, oh, sorry. I was just naming all the other things that you can do in Rome. I'm not sure if my videos and pictures do the city justice, but Rome is a must see. If you have the chance to visit Italy, you can't miss Rome. 
Yes, it is very hot in the summer. Yes, it doesn't have the best food everywhere, but it's a dream destination that everyone should visit at least once in their life. Ciao, arrivederci, goodbye, see you next week.